हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू आर यूट्यूब चैनल मैथ्स एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स ट्यूटोरियल्स टुडे इन आर वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द लिमिटेशंस ऑफ कन्वेंशनल ट्यूब्स प्लीज टू चेक आउट द प्रीवियस वीडियो एज दिस इज द कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ द लिमिटेशन ऑफ द कन्वेंशनल ट्यूब्स सो द सेकेंड लिमिटेशन इज द लेट इंडक्टेंस इंडक्टेंस फॉर द कंडक्टिंग वायर्स इज नोन एज द लेट इंडक्टेंस एज यू कैन सी इन दिस डायग्राम दिस इज अ ट्रायोड or it can also be known as the conventional tube in three inductors are added to grid anode and cathode so now this inductor which is added to grid can be represented as lr and this inductor can be represented la and this inductor can be represented as lk now the let inductance can be calculated by l upon mu a where the l represents the let inductance small l represents the coil length and a represents the area of metal plates now the reactive inductance can be calculated using xl is equal to 2 pi fl where xl is the reactive inductance and fl is the frequency as you can see that xl is directly proportional to fl in the let inductance while in the inter electrode capacitance effect xl was inversely proportional to fl so now what is the problem the problem in the lead inductance is the impedance mismatch so at the microwave frequency inductive reactance is very high because of the high impedance there is impedance mismatch problem at the input and the output port there will be reflections at input and output port so the small portion of the input will reach the output port and the gain of the device decreases also as the frequency increases the reactance xl which is equal to 2 pi fl increases and hence the voltages appearing at the active electrodes are less than the voltage at the base pins so this results in the reduced gain for the tube amplifier or the conventional tube hence the impedance mismatch is the problem for the lead inductance the third limitation of the conventional tube is transit time oblique angle effect so now what is transit time the time taken for an electron to transmit from cathode to anode is known as the transit time the transit time is represented with tau n which is equal to d upon v not where this v not is the velocity or the speed of the electrons and d is the distance between the cathode and the anode so now as you can see in this diagram this is anode this is grid and this is the cathode and this is the heater so now the electrons travels from the cathode to the anode now the time taken for the electrons to cover this distance that is between the cathode and anode is known as the transit time and this is the input signal which is a low frequency signal and this is a input signal of the high frequency signal so now there are two conditions in this that tau is very less than t where t is the time period and tau is the transit time and second is time period is very very less than the tau so this condition occurs when there is low frequency and this condition occurs when there is high frequency so now what happens in this at low frequency the transit time is very small that is electrons reach instantaneously from cathode to anode but at the high frequency where the condition is time period is very less than the transit time that means the input changes 100 to 1000 times in one transit time of an electron so for the positive half cycle of the input signal electron start moving towards the anode but before it reaches the anode the input changes from positive to negative half cycle so the electrons will be attracted towards the 
cathode and this process continues. There is also a remedy for the transit time effect. To minimize the transit time, the separation between the electrodes can be decreased, but this increases the inter-electrode capacitance and the plate to the cathode potential V can also be increased. This cannot be increased indefinitely. Therefore, there must be a trade-off between the inter-electrode capacitance and the transit time. Let's continue the limitations of conventional tubes in the next video and thank you for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel.